Hello everyone, James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we have ourselves an exciting knife review. We're gonna be taking a look at the Mora Garberg in carbon steel. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. All right guys, now before we commence testing, let me just give you guys a brief rundown and the specs. Now, of course, I'm sure 90% of you guys watching already know that Mora Knive or Mora Knives is a company from Sweden that makes some highly prized, you know, really great knives very much beloved by the outdoors community now one thing that people have been demanding for a couple years is that they wanted a full tang outdoors mora knife so a few years ago mora made the mora, mora garberg and that one they made with stainless steel 14c 28n stainless steel which is a great steel but some people wanted something a little bit more old school a carbon type steel so here it is they finally made that other than that everything else is identical to that first garberg model so it's going to be 1 8 inch thick 90 degree spine Scandinavian grind, once again, full tang with the exposed pommel for striking in the back. Plastic handle, very ergonomic. And you have your choice between two types of handles for the Garberg model. You either get the plastic multi-mount sheath system if you like, or you can get a leather sheath. I do like the leather one better. In my original review for the Garberg, I did say I didn't really like the plastic one because the knife fell out once. But this sheath has really great retention. I do like the flap with the button. And it just looks very handsome, so I really like this a lot more. Okay, guys, so enough talk. Let's get to the testing. We're going to have three tests for this blade. Now, it is an outdoors knife, and it is a full tang knife. So we're going to be doing a one-stick fire to get a fire going, test it out for batoning, whittling, feather sticking, all that woodwork. From there, we're going to go ahead and process a small kangaroo rat. So we have ourselves, we caught ourselves a small game this morning, and we're going to be processing it to cook for breakfast. And then we're gonna go ahead and get the root of a yucca plant and we're gonna use the pommel down here and the 90 degree spine to wear that down, process it down to go ahead and make some soap to clean our hands. Cause once again, we're messing with blood and you know, all that stuff from small game and we don't wanna transfer that bacteria and get sick. So I think those are gonna be three well-rounded tests for this blade. So let's get started. All right, folks, so it made a decent amount of feather sticks. Now, this wood is China Berry, and it's a very fibrous wood, so it's not the best wood for feather sticks. It just doesn't look as pretty as, say, if we were using uh, softer wood like poplar or, or pine, but it's going to work just fine. Now, for that 90-degree spine, can it strike a ferro rod? We all know the answer to that. Mora makes some ridiculously great 90-degree spines. So if I was to do that here, not a doubt in my mind that it's gonna work just fine. However, it's carbon, so we're gonna take advantage of that. And the advantage of having a carbon blade over a stainless blade is that you can use it with a piece of hard rock like chert or flint, anything like that to strike sparks to get a fire going flint and steel style. So let's go ahead and do that. I have my char cloth there. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Oh, there we go. 
I actually didn't notice it. The sun's starting to get pretty strong out here, but. See it right there? All right, so here we got a lit piece of char. Let's get this tender bundle. Now this tender bundle is wet. Everything was uh, frosted over this morning out here. And in my infinite wisdom, I forgot to get some the night before. So it might take a little bit of time, but Whoa, that worked a lot faster than I thought it would. All right, folks, so test number one was a success. We have our fire going. We're just burning, burning it down to make a nice bed of embers, and then we're gonna get our breakfast going. So this is a kangaroo rat, or herbivorous rodent, that lives out here in the American Southwest, and we caught one for breakfast, so. This is not gonna take that much work. And in fact, you could probably do this with a much smaller knife, but that's all we caught for today, so we cannot be picky. Okay, let's start opening all this up. What I love about moras is just how sharp they are. They just have a really good angle and they're very easy to sharpen as well. Of course, that's, you know, partly due to the fact that they're Scandinavian grind, so they're very easy. But mora just does it really good. I'm gonna baton this little leg. tail. Just rip this out. And here's where you want to get very delicate to Get those little guts out. You don't want those. Okay, so there we go. Just needs a rinse. And this is gonna be our breakfast. Now, of course, this is not a reliable uh, form of uh, testing when it comes to game processing because it's such a small animal. But that's all we were able to capture this morning. You know, sometimes you get a bounty, sometimes you don't. But once again, if this was a survival simulation, this knife is helping me process game and it did it effortlessly. So I'm just gonna rinse this guy and set him on the fire. It has been rinsed and now we have put some spices on it. Pepper, cayenne, and salt for enjoyment. Now there's always gonna be those smart Alex on the comments section. If it's survival, why do you have spices? Well, because we're smart enough to carry spices with us because we like to enjoy our food. So she's ready to go. We have it on a mesquite stick and we're gonna place her right over this fire, over the smoke, so she can slowly cook. And as you saw, the Mora Garbered Carbon worked very well for woodworking, batoning, feather sticking. It worked well for flint and steel fire and for game processing. So we're now off to test number three.
go. Here we go. Soap. All right, folks, so I did pull out a piece of yucca root, and this is how it looks like. Now, it is a little rough looking on the outside, but on the inside, it's nice and white, and it contains chemical compounds called saponins, and that's basically soap, and that's what the natives in this region used as shampoo, as, as once again, soap, and even to clean their clothing. So what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna test out that pommel down here in the 90 degree spine, just to expose some of that inner root, so the fibrous inner root, so I can mix it with some water, make some soap, so I can clean my hands and clean the blade, because you know when you're touching body fluids, blood, and all that stuff, you don't wanna contaminate your food or contaminate your you know your stuff and then later on you get sick so we want to get some soap out of it for some hygiene so this is some pretty tough fibrous stuff so i just really just want to expose the innards so i can mix it with water Can you see it? Can you see the suds that are already forming? Now, of course, because we're out here in the desert and we are limited on water, it's gonna be difficult for me to demonstrate just how sudsy this stuff gets when you mix it with water because it's gonna also get a little bit sandy. But I do have a video on this as well if you guys are interested in checking that out. Yeah. All right, so I'd say that'll expose some good amount of the root, the saponins. So let's get our water. Once again, because we weren't able to take this root home and you know really cleanse it out of the dirt, you're not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna look as clean as it normally would be. So we're just improvising out here, and this is all, all the water we have to spend, not including our drinking water. But I don't know if you can tell, but there's already suds forming here. Okay, so I'm exposing those inner fibers, getting those the root going. Once again, be sure to check out that video. You can see the suds here. And I have a video completely devoted to this soap. But check out the water. You could see all the suds in there. So yeah, this is soap. This is a chemical compound that is known to clean. Got to clean that blade. And wash my hands as well because, you know, once again, I'm touching wildlife. And I don't want to eat in 20 minutes from now and transfer bacteria. So... Realistically, guys, if you find yourself in a survival situation, this is more likely of a danger, hygiene, than you know any mountain lion or bear or anything like that. Bacteria is the biggest threat. So make sure you clean your stuff, clean yourself. And uh, there we go, our desert soap. And now this is carbon steel, right? So you wanna make sure after you clean your stuff, to give it a wipe and dry it off because this will rust. That's where the stainless steel Garberg holds the advantage. This one will make your fire flint and steel style with chert or flint or quartz, but the other one will last, outlast the elements a lot more. But uh, test number three has been a success. All right, folks, so my kangaroo rat is just about well done. And you always wanna cook these guys well done. Save the medium rare for the steakhouse, but wild game, you always wanna make sure that it's cooked fully to avoid any issues, but she's ready to go. So it's breakfast time. It's really good. Your turn.
All right, folks, so the Mora Garber Carbon. How did it perform with today's tests? Well, one, we got a fire going, batoning, feathering, then not only that, but we used the carbon to its advantage, and we got a flint and steel improvised fire as well. And then we, of course, we let, we let it die down so it can cook our food, but we got it going again because we're gonna make some coffee and make some char cloth because we got another video to film right after this. But not only did we get a flame going, a fire going, it helped us process our small game. And you know, Scandinavian grinds, that's not their bread and butter. That's not where they're gonna shine, but they do well. You just, you basically just need a sharp knife and know what you're doing. And it got us our, it helped us process our kangaroo rat. And then last of all, our test number three is our soap. So we used the root of the yucca soap. And as you can see the suds here, and you can see it's already whitening out a lot more. And once again, these are sapins. I mean, this is scientifically proven soap right here. So it helped us clean our hands, clean the blade. So we got fire, we got hygiene, and we have food. You know, basics of survival right here. So once again, this knife passed with flying colors. I really dig this one. Really awesome. I mean, Mora never disappoints. They know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a long time, and they really listen to their fans, their customers, and what we want. So they gave us a full tang and then some. They really updated their, I mean, not only was it full tang, but I mean, they gave us a striking pummel in the end. They did update their sheaths as well. That's something that I think a lot of us can agree. Mora could really stand to update their sheaths, and I think they really did. And uh, yeah, exceptional knife, really good. If I had to say, I know people are gonna ask if, you know, which one do I prefer? If I had to choose, I would probably say I choose, I, I do prefer the stainless version slightly better, and that's really just because I have a lot of carbon knives already. So just for the sake of variety, I would choose the stainless steel version. And also just uh, the black on black is not really aesthetically my look. I prefer other colors like uh, earth tones. So other than that, that's just personal choice. That's not any detriment on the knife itself. You saw it work very well. So that's about the conclusion of this video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and go ahead and comment below, what is your favorite Mora? The Garbergs are really proving themselves to be a worthy addition to the Mora line. And then of course we have the classics like the Companion, the Bushcraft Black, uh, classic number one. And then of course there's my personal favorite, which is the Consbull. You know, so you can't go wrong with Mora's and you know, it's pretty difficult to choose which one's your favorite. So big thank you to Mora Knives for sending this to me, particularly Suzanne, Suzanne you rock. And then guys, if you guys are interested in purchasing one for the holidays, there's a link to our Amazon store be below that once you purchase that, it throws a little kickback at us a couple cents to help fund adventures like this to keep making unique and interesting content. For us, it's important not just to make a review, but to get, throw, take you guys with us on an adventure as well and really change stuff up. So once again, thank you so much. I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.